Hello, everyone. My name is Adrian Lesiu. Uh, I'm a tech leader with Cisco DevNet. Uh, thank you so much for joining this session. We're going to talk about Smartsheet API and Cisco ACI in this session. And I'm going to show you briefly how to use Smartsheets to actually manage your Cisco ACI infrastructure. So, but first, a couple of words about myself. So, like I said, I'm a tech leader with Cisco. I've been with Cisco now for uh, almost seven years. Um, have a breadth of experience, international experience, more than 15 years. Uh, and within DevNet, I'm part of the DevNet Innovations team, um, in, in which I'm helping customers, partners to innovate and, and to bring our APIs to them and to build custom solutions on top of our APIs. So in this session, the agenda session is First of all, we're going to go and have a look at the Smartsheet API. We're going to see a, a couple of slides on that. After that, we're going to move and have a, a brief look at Cisco ACI REST API. And then third bullet point here would be to bring both of these together and show you the solution we've built on, on top of Smartsheet and Cisco ACI and how you can use your, uh, your Smartsheet account to actually start managing uh, your ECI infrastructure and also advantages and why would you actually you would do that. And then we're gonna wrap up the session with a, a short demo on how the solution looks and uh, some of the features that it has. All right, so let's get started. Like I said, first, we're gonna get into Smartsheet API. So be familiar with smartsheet.com, right? It's a SaaS solution. You have online uh, smartsheets, Excel forms, and but you might not know that actually they also have an API, right? So most of the functionality that you see in, in your browser is also exposed via an API. So what does the, the Smartsheet API can do for you? Like I said, you can do basic functions like importing and exporting data to other systems so you can export your smart sheets or import them in other systems you can automate processing of data uh, without using interaction you can have also uh, alerts triggered on schedule or as webhooks you can read and update sheets of course uh, manage folders and workspaces administer user and accounts so it's a fairly um, complete um, functionality of the smart sheet that is exposed over the, the API, but we'll see in a couple of slides that there is some functionality that is, is not there yet and how we go about um, addressing that, that problem. So how you get started with the smart sheet API? First of all, you would have to create a developer account, which also is attached to your Smartsheet paid account. So you would have to have a, a Smartsheet paid account under your personal settings in your profile. As you see here on the right hand side, in the slide, you can actually uh, generate your access token. This will be, this will give you access to the API, and this will be basically your authentication token that you will be using to interact with the Smartsheet API. Once you have your account set up, you have your token generated. Uh, and by the way, here is also where you can revoke your token. So if they've been compromised, um, you can just revoke it here and it's gone. And you can generate a new one. So once you have this, you can all, uh, of course, get Postman. If you guys are not familiar with um, Postman.com, have a look at this. It's a very nice tool, a REST API client that allows you to interact with, um, with APIs, with REST APIs. Once you have Postman installed, you can actually get the Postman's Smartsheet collection and environment. So using the collection, there is a collection of API calls is pretty complete. There's hundreds of API calls that you can go and practice in your own environment with your own um, API token for Smartsheet. And then you can also make your first API call uh, try to update a, a row in a sheet or maybe a cell or a column um, and all of those basic API calls that you can do. Of course, smartsheet.com, they also provide SDKs in several languages for the purposes of our demo and our social we built. We're going to use the Python SDK. 
And of course, you get the typical benefits that come with SDKs. You have your native language object models um, within the SDK, logging, of course, error retry. This sample code and documentation is actually very good. I have links for documentation in the resources at the end of this presentation, also with, uh, with other links that I think that are useful for you guys um, as you you try to get this in your own environment this solution so for the python sdk you can install it of course with pip i have here pip install smartsheet that's pretty much all you need to get it installed um ideally in a virtual environment and then i have here a bit of sample code just to show how simple it is to create a connection back into the smartsheet api with initializing the client this function Basically, it uses the, the smart sheet module that we've imported. And with the doc notation, I'm accessing the smart sheet object and I'm passing in the, the API access token that you generated in your, um, in your profile. If everything goes well, your token is valid, you get a hook back into the API, and then you can actually get a list of the, all the web hooks for that specific client for that specific user by invoking the list webhooks method of the webhooks Python object that's part of that Smartsheet client that's been initialized in the first function. So fairly straightforward. You see a couple of lines of code and you're connected to the SDK. You can get a list of all the webhooks for that specific user. Like I was saying, the API is fairly complete, but there are some features that are not there. For example, the sample code here is showing you how to actually do a, an API call without using the SDK. In this case, we're updating the color of a background cell. So the cell at this column ID, we're changing the color to red because there were some failures while our, our script was running, right? So in this case, you would have to go and do a, an actual put call, API call, and use the request library to perform that action and to, to change the background color of, um, of that cell in, in the sheet, right? So SDK is, almost complete, but there are some features that you would have to go directly and use the API. So that was it for a quick introduction to the Smartsheet API. Um, next, we're gonna have a look at Cisco ACI REST API. So the ACI object model, as you might know, everything in ACI is an object, right? So we see on the right-hand side here in the PowerPoint slide, we have tenants and all the objects that come underneath them application profile, bridge domains, and then for bridge domains, objects that are um, subnets, uh, endpoint groups, customer endpoints, IPs. So all these objects are organized in the parent and child relationship, as you can see here. So the tenant object is the parent of the application profile, bridge domain, um, and all these objects are assembled to create the management information tree or the MIT as we call it. And everything starts and builds from the top of the tree, which is the root object or uh, also known as the uni object. So once you know how uh, the objects are organized, they're also exposed over a REST API interface, right? So ACI was designed as API first, and everything is built on top of this REST API. And what I mean by that is that the API GUI, so the web interface that you um, access uh, to get access to the API is built on top of this REST API. The Cobra SDK, by ACI, ACI Toolkit, we'll have a look in, uh, at a slide on how to actually use ACI Toolkit. All the plugins, the ACI Kubernetes integrations, everything is built on this REST API. And also our solution is also gonna be using this REST API to perform changes in, uh, in our ACI fabric as uh, they've been 
selected in the smart sheet. So things to know about the ACI REST API, it leverages uh, a token in cookie or certificate based authentication. So similar how we've seen with, uh, with the smart sheet API, there is uh, a token based authentication uses JSON or XML within the URI instead of using the headers, the content type and accept headers to indicate the data formats so of both JSON and XML are supported. And uh, the API will target specific class type or managed objects. So each API endpoint would basically point to a managed object, one of the objects that we've seen in the previous slide. And the REST API guide is available on Cisco.com. I also have a link of to this, to the API guide into in the resources of this presentation. So for you to, to reference um, later. Getting started with ACI, you can take advantage of the .NET Sandbox. If you don't have access to an ACI infrastructure, we have their um, ACI always on and also reservable sandbox. You can check out the .NET Learning Labs, Automation Exchange and Code Exchange, uh, as well as ACI Postman Collection, similar to the Smartsheet. Postman Collection is also an ACI Smart Collection environment that you can take advantage of and just play around with the API and perform your, your API calls. Links to all of these are also in the resources of this presentation. So like I was saying, ACI Toolkit, you can install it with pip install ACI Toolkit is a Python-based module, you could call it. I have here a sample code on how you would actually go uh, and use it. So you would import it as a module, your typical import in Python. Your typical import in Python. And to establish a session, you just use the dot notation to access the, the session object of the ACI module. Then you would pass in the host name, username, and password. So this would be your AP controller information. And then you get a connection. And then to get a list of all the tenants in that specific session, you see here the notation aci.tenant.get for that specific session. Pass it as a parameter will return a list of all the tenants in that um, APIC instance that you established the session with. So fairly straightforward. It abstracts right, all the connectivity requirements, all the headers, um, the token, all of that. It's handled through the session object for you automatically, so you don't need to worry about that. Just establish a session simply using the session object and then perform all the, um, the configuration changes that you need uh, to perform programmatically. So there was a very brief introduction to Cisco ACI and the REST API that it exposes. So now let's have a quick look at the ACI management using the smart sheets. So I have here uh, a brief architecture of the solution. And by the way, you can find the solution in uh, the Devon Automation Exchange. Um, you can find it in the resources in the link. Just go to DevNet Automation Exchange, look for ACI Day 2 configuration with Smartsheets. You can have a full description of the solution uh, also in there. So like I was saying, the architecture, the user with interact, will interact with the smart sheet that acts like a front end for, um, for our application. So the user would perform the configuration changes from drop downs. It would like it would select the tenant, bridge domain, whatever objects that need to be selected. And then once the user saves that smart sheet and saves the changes, that triggers a webhook, a Smartsheet webhook to be triggered that's being intercepted by Python script. The Python script takes all that data from the webhook, builds an Ansible playbook and an Ansible variable file based on the information that it received from, uh, from the webhook, 
and then triggers an Ansible run to actually perform those changes back into your APIC controller and ACI fabric. Pretty straightforward. Use the smart sheet as a front end to your um, management of ACI fabrics. What are some of the advantages of this, right? Why would you use this instead of just using your typical uh, APIC GUI, web GUI that folks are familiar with? First of all, you can simplify greatly the workflows for ACI configuration changes. And what I mean by that is that using the APIC GUI, you go next step by step, it get convoluted to have many different windows that you need to go through to, to configure a specific feature in ACI. With this solution, you can have all those steps and all those different configuration windows uh, all brought into one smart sheet. We'll see in the demo in a bit how you can have all these objects be populated for you. Just select them, save the smart sheet, and, and that's it. No next, no configuration. Everything is in one place uh, in one smart sheet, all the configuration information. Parallelism is also a big advantage, probably the biggest thing, in my opinion, of this solution. You can have multiple changes performed at the same time. So we'll have a look at the demo. You can configure multiple interfaces, multiple subnets, multiple applications at the same time, taking advantage of the application, which is really not possible with the uh, with the AP GUI. Add the potency, this comes from using Ansible in the back end. And also it is an alternative to the front end of Cisco ACI and REST API. So this is similar to how the um, Cisco APIC web interface uses the REST API. We're also using the REST API and Ansible to perform our changes. Um, so, this is how the application looks. This is the front end developed in JavaScript. Uh, you can find the code in GitHub and in Automation Exchange. You can modify this as you see fit. You can add also additional use cases. We went here with two sites, with two APIC instances, and eight use cases that we discussed with customers, with partners. We found that these eight are the most common use cases with uh, with the configuration uh, of your ACI or of a typical ACI fabric. It would be deployment of an application, creating static path binding, configuring filters, contracts, associating endpoint groups to contracts, configure policy groups, configure switch and interface profiles, and associate interface to policy groups. So these are just eight. You can add your own use cases, of course. You can expand this. Uh, you can modify it as you see fit. You can add more sites. You can modify the sites. So really, it's open and um, it's adaptable to your own environment very easily. So now let's have a look at the demo. So I have here started my application. This is the front end. Um, you see the first smart sheet. It's in a form format. So it's called ACI provisioning start point. In this case, I have two sites, APIC1 and APIC2. These are two APIC controllers. And I have the eight use cases that we discussed about deploying application, create static path binding, configure filters, contracts, associating endpoint groups to contracts, configure policy groups, configure switch and interface profiles, and then associate interface to policy groups. So these are all pointing to smart sheets on the left hand side of the menu here and we'll see in our demo how that works um, and they contain all the parameters needed so that all these uh, use cases can be successfully configured and deployed in our APIC instances so if i were to choose my APIC one instance and once i do that it pops up here and gives me the option of choosing one of the tenants that are available for this APIC instance. So let's say I choose test one and I want to deploy an app. I want to do that use case. And once I submit this, the form is successfully um, captured, all the entries. This triggers a webhook 
in the background and our application intercepts that webhook and builds all the fields, pre-populates all the fields in our deploy and app smart sheet. So here I have the site automatically pre-populated and the tenant. And for this tenant, I also have pre-populated all the VRFs. I have only one in here, bridge domains, um, and all that information is being pulled out from the Epic instance. So now let's quickly go and create a new gateway just to, to show you. So if I were to choose here and change a new subnet for this bridge domain, so if I configure 32, and I have it here, config, uh, log, I'm already logged in into that Epic instance and you can see that there's nothing. Once I save this, what happens? Again, the information is being captured uh, from that webhook that's being sent. A, an Ansible playbook and a variable file are being created. An Ansible, um, the, the playbook is being run. The change is captured. Right here, as you can see, there's a, a new subnet that's been added, 32.1, from our Smartsheet, deploying app Smartsheet and the information that we populated here. And like I was saying, the one of the biggest advantages with this is that we can actually go ahead and do several changes in parallel. So for example, here, if I go ahead and I change the VLANs on these interfaces at the same time and 18. Again, if I go back, I can see the interfaces here are still on the old VLANs. So 115, 16 and 17. And if I go ahead now and save this, same thing, web gets triggered, playbook gets created and gets run against um, our APIC instance. And we should see here shortly that we got an 118. There we go. So 118 already got changed. 117 and then 116. So the VLANs have been updated um, in parallel on all those interfaces uh, in our Epic instance. So that pretty much wraps up the, the demo part of this and Going back to the resources, right? Um, make sure you guys check out Automation Exchange. Thank you so much for your interest in this. Um, I also have at the top of the presentation my uh, my Twitter. Hope you guys enjoy that I create. Thank you so much for joining my session, and uh, take care. See you on the next one.